Good evening. Welcome to this presentation of the Living Last Supper and the celebration of Holy Communion. I was going to invite you forward to your seats, but you're already here, which is great. Hear now this call to worship. Come and remember the love of Jesus gathered at table with his friends. Come to receive from Christ the bread of life, the cup of blessing. Come receive the tender service Christ offers each of us. Come to receive the challenge of the new commandment, love one another. Come and contemplate the many temptations of a world that would entice us, like Judas, to betray the trust of a suffering God. Come to travel with Jesus the way of the cross so that our Easter Alleluia will take on new meaning. Let us worship together and reflect upon the life of Christ that we might remember what discipleship may cost and what it may reap. Let us pray. Holy God, draw us into worship with a spirit of humility. Let us gather with open hearts prepared to love even to the point of breaking, as we seek to receive this story with our whole selves. In drawing closer to Christ and his crucified love, may we draw closer to you and to your beloved world. Amen. You are now invited to stand and sing verses 1 and 2 of What Wondrous Love Is This?
My name is Simon Peter. One day my partners and I were out cleaning our nets after a long, hard night of fishing. We were tired, we were discouraged, we had nothing to show for our efforts. Jesus was pre preaching, as usual, to the people who followed him everywhere, hanging on his every word. He asked me if he could sit in my boat, and I rowed out a little so that his voice would carry. And after he finished teaching, he asked me to row out a little farther and throw my nets into the water again. I told him it was pointless. We had fished all night and caught nothing. It was pointless. But I did, as he asked. And astonishingly, so many fish, the nets began to break as we pulled them into the boat. So many fish, the, the two boats started to sink under the incredible weight. I fell down to my knees. I felt sinful, faithless. And then he told me I would no longer catch fish, but I would catch men. I didn't fully understand what he was talking about. But I left my boats. I left my fish. I left my livelihood. I left everything to follow him. And I never looked back. And tonight, he tells us that one of these 12 men, his faithful disciples, will betray him. I vainly promise to follow him even to death if necessary. But then he looked me right into the eyes and he said, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Deny him? Me? Am I not the rock he called me to be? Could I lose my Lord, my friend, because I'm not strong enough to be faithful? Is it I? I've been known as Peter's little brother Andrew my whole life. Years ago I left the fishing business to join that fiery baptizer, John, in his preach towards God. And now I follow him, God, being because of John. I love to bring people to Jesus. I brought my brother to Jesus and have watched him grow and become a leader among our people. I brought the boy with the loaves and the fish to Jesus so that he may feed all who come before him. I've even brought Gentiles to Jesus because Jesus accepts anyone who is willing to seek the truth. But now, tonight, one of us betrays him, and in, the, in our midst is this betrayer. Is it my own naive foolishness that has brought this upon our Lord? Jesus, is it I, Andrew, who betrays you? I am known as John the Lesser because of my stature and to differentiate me from the many other men named James. Since joining Jesus' group of followers, I have seen most miraculous things. Jesus has the power to calm the seas, even the wind and rain listen to his voice. Jesus has the power over demons. He has cast out evil spirits. And he has given us the power to do the same in his name. Jesus has the power of healing. He has taken away diseases that people have suffered with for years, even from birth. Beyond this, Jesus has the power to forgive sin. And now, one of the men that sit at this table one who eats and drinks with him will betray him. And, and how could any of us doubt that he is Lord, our Messiah? After walking and talking with him, miracles after miracle, proof after proof. He has called each of us to follow. Who could turn away? 
Is it I? is James. John is my younger brother. We used to work with Peter and Andrew in the fishing industry. Jesus called us to follow him on the same day that he called Peter, and we did, thinking that he would establish his kingdom on earth and we would serve as his right-hand men. Jesus calls us the sons of thunder. Actually, we're the sons of Zebedee, a rich and powerful man in this community who is a personal friend of many of the influential religious leaders. At one time, I thought this might guarantee me a position of power in the new kingdom. In fact, my mother suggested that I should sit on Jesus' right hand when he claimed his throne, and John should sit on his left. After all, we were the ones who were invited to the mountain with Jesus, and we saw him transfigured. His face shone like the sun, and the voice of God spoke out of heaven. He chose me. He chose all of us. How could one of us betray him? We have seen his strict adherence to the law. We have heard the voice of God say, this is my son. We have witnessed countless miracles. 
things that no man could accomplish. Is it my brother John? Is it me? Is it I? I am Matthew. Before I became a disciple of Jesus, I worked for the Roman government, collecting taxes. I used to take advantage of one of the perks of that profession, skimming a little off the top for personal use. But in listening to Jesus, I've come to realize that I've sinned against my neighbors. I've cheated them. I've taken advantage of them. I've become wealthy by taking out hard-earned wages and goods. My heart has changed because of Jesus. I even held a huge feast at my home and invited others from that corrupt organization to come and meet him, perhaps be changed as well. But now that he speaks of a traitor among us, will others suspect me, a known publican, a sinner? Lord, is it I? Before Jesus called me, I was a member of the Zealots. We believe in God that God alone rules over this holy nation of Israel. And we refuse to pay homage or taxes to any Roman governor. It goes against my nature, but Jesus teaches that God ordains all powers and governments on earth, allowing them to rule over us, and we must give our due and treat them with respect. Since following the Christ, I tried to channel my zeal into telling others about Jesus, God's Son, and reaching out to people for his kingdom. Is there a spy among us, a Roman perhaps? How could any follower of Jesus question his power and authority? He is God. He is our king. He is greater than any government. Could I somehow revert to my old ways? Could I silently <coughs> pray my king? Is it I? He seemed to know me already. 
to know my innermost thoughts. Although I've always been a devout man, this Jesus seemed to give me something more intimate, more personal to my religion than I'd ever had before. For thousands of years, we've celebrated the Feast of the Passover, remembering the bitter slavery with the bitter herbs, remembering the ten plagues with the ten drops from the goblet, remembering how the sacrificed lamb saved the Israelites and their firstborn from the angel of death. Remember how God set his people free. Oh, that wonderful story. How they fled with unbaked leavened bread and how they cooked that unleavened bread in the warmth of the sun. But now, Jesus takes that unleavened bread, breaking it, saying, this is my body. And in a likewise manner, taking the cup, saying, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me? Oh, I don't understand. How could I betray a friend? Lord, is it I? My name is Philip. Jesus came to me one day while I was working and simply said, follow me. So I did, and I spent the entire day with him. I was convinced that this man was God here on earth. Recently, there were men, women, children, thousands of them gathered on the hillside listening to Jesus speak. Jesus asked me to provide bread for all of these followers. Why, we have no such funds in the treasury, and all I could think of was the actual physical cost of feeding so many people. I did not think of the people's discomfort or the possibility of a divine miracle. Jesus gathered five loaves of bread and two tiny fish, and he broke it, and he gave it and fed all the people. In fact, there was enough food for 12 baskets of leftovers. God, here among us, who would deny this promised one? And to whom would we deliver this person? Would they deliver him to the vain and arrogant priests who do not believe in the miracle that God has sent his son? or to the pagan Roman government that fears a rival ruler? How could we forget his power, his compassion? How could I forget? Jesus, is it I? His hand carpenter's hands, rough and weathered, and yet so gentle and tender. They reached out and touched a leper and erased the disease from his body. They reached out and t touched Peter's mother-in-law and her fever disappeared. He lifted Jairus' daughter from her deathbed. These hands opened the ears of the deaf and the eyes of the blind. They healed the bones of the lame. Countless infirmities, diseases, deformities, gone. His hands reached out to bless little children that others would have turned away. They reached down to rescue Peter from the churning sea that would have swallowed him. These hands reached out, blessing and breaking bread, folding in prayer, simple gestures, yet so profound. These hands, worshiping his Father, in the hands of God, in this very room, all of us have seen these hands 
with miracles. All of us have been served by these hands. Who could betray him to an enemy? Jesus, will I, Thaddeus, betray you? Is it I?
I am John, the beloved disciple, loved by Jesus, loved by the one who was in the beginning with God and yet is greater than all of us and sets us an example through humility and servitude. He washes our feet. Beloved, you think I'd have reason to be proud, but quite the opposite is true. I thought I would have a place of prestige and power in his kingdom, but he's shown me over and over that the war he wages is a spiritual one. He reaches out to the needy, to paupers, not the rich and powerful. He dines with common folk and sinners alike. I've seen him dine with a, a well-known Pharisee and with an immoral woman and forgive them both. God sent his son into the world because he loved us so much. Me, the lowly. He does not want any one of us to perish, but to have everlasting life. This Jesus is the way. He is life. We as closest friends and followers don't understand the depth of his love. He would give his life for mine. Can I not do the same? Will I stumble out of pride? Is it I, Lord? I have been listening to Jesus speak tonight around this table, and I simply do not understand. Words meant to comfort, yet words met with confusion and misunderstanding. Words of betrayal met with incredulity and suspicion. Where is he going? There is so much yet to be done right here, right now. Sometimes I marvel that I, Thomas, have seen him with my own eyes. I have touched him with my own hands. I have seen my Lord and Master work wonders, change lives. I don't want him to go away, not now, not ever. And how are we to follow him if we don't know where he's going? Is it something I've done or something I will do that will aid in this betrayal he speaks of? Has he seen my lack of faith, my hidden doubts, my fears? Is it I? I am Judas Iscariot, the treasurer for this group. I have followed Jesus, but I am growing increasingly tired of his reluctance to take a stand against our oppressors. I believe he is who he says he is. But why? Why would God send a Messiah for this? Washing feet, breaking bread. Someone must force him to make his move, to usher in the new kingdom, to overthrow these Roman tyrants. A betrayer among us, indeed. These men look at each other around this table, wondering, guessing, accusing. They examine their inner feelings but why? Why do they behave like sheep waiting for a shepherd? Someone must do something to force him to lead us 
over our enemies and to usher in the new kingdom. Someone must do something. Well, I have. Tonight, the elders and the chief priests will help me, help him, lead us to victory and overthrow the tyrants who oppress us. Oh yes, someone has betrayed him. Someone has betrayed him. Perhaps all of us will do so with what we do, what we fail to do, or what we allow to happen. Perhaps all of us will betray him before this night is out. Master, is it I?
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share in the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our and it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth and create the fruit of the vine. You made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot you and our faith was weak, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty. And blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to deliver us from the bondage of slave, slavery to sin. In humility, he descends from your heights to kneel in obedience to love's commands. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. In the deserts of our wanderings, he sustains us, giving us his body as manna for our weariness. The cup of suffering which he drank has become for us the cup of salvation. In his death, he ransomed us from death's dominion. In his resurrection, he opened the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O oh God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands. Bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when, with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The choir and orchestra is invited to come first, and then please come forward, starting at the back by the side aisles and return by the center aisles. Come, for all is ready.
Let us pray. God of grace, your son Jesus Christ left us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and blood. May we who have celebrated this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And in sing the final verse of what wondrous love is this.